Hey, Warwick. Hey, Nick. How are you today? Very well, thank you. How are you? I'm incredibly good. I have a perplexing question for you. Ooh, I always get worried when you say things like that because I think, gosh, am I even going to have an answer? I don't know that you will, but we'll give it a go. Are you ready? Mm, okay. Why do cows wear bells? Uh, no. You live on a farm. You should know the answer to this one. Oh, my cows don't have bells around their necks. Don't they? No. Okay, it's because their horns don't work. Oh, no. <laughs> now I remember my 12-year-old, when she was probably seven, told me that joke. <laughs> you know when you have that memory flashback, it's like, yeah. oh, damn. That was in the memory bank somewhere, but sleep deprivation and caffeine have killed it. I missed it. Thanks for that, Nick. Hello, Nick. listeners. Hello, listeners. Welcome to the show. Welcome back. Mm, Brady's in back. business. Yeah. Perhaps you've been listening for a long time. Perhaps you're a newer listener. Or if you're a, yeah, if you're a newbie, um, hopefully you're going through the back catalogue and having some fun with that. I've just come up with a new topic for our Effort Friday episodes. Ooh. Well, you'll have to tell me off air. Oh, I'll, I'll... So we don't spill the beans, unless you want to spill the beans and create some intrigue. Hello, listeners. Are you ready for some intrigue? <laughs> Should I get our listeners all excited about it? <laughs> Do they get excited about our next episodes? Probably not. Um, it's, have you noticed this trend? I don't know because your daughter is still young and maybe I don't know too many of our younger clients use this yet. What I have noticed is the continued uh, creep of American English into our spoken language and all of our children, except maybe the oldest, say new instead of new. They pronounce okay. the N odd. Okay, please don't. If this is not an effort fr Friday episode, Nick, don't yeah, know, get me but started. I'm just flagging it so that everybody can come and join us and hear us get all ranty about the English mm, language. You're poking me now and you've just ruined my day. I can't go on now without having that stuck in the back of my brain. New. No. New. No. I got some new shoes. Got new shoes. Like a New Yorker. <laughs> that was anyway. All right, let's talk about something else, Coxie. I was I was actually feeling excited at the start of this episode before you ruined it with the language thing because you know I'm a stickler for language. Mm -hmm. I was excited to talk about money. Sometimes money makes me excited and sometimes it makes me feel really flipping stressed. Oh. Why does money fake, fake you? <laughs> Why does money make you feel stressed? When I don't have enough. When there doesn't seem to be enough in the bank to pay all of the bills. Mm, yeah, that's pretty stressful. It is. There's a, there's a lot of uncertainty around people's financial situations at the moment. And we've been talking a lot about money and cash flow and finance and all that sort of stuff with our Tradypreneur members of late. In mm -hmm. fact, we've introduced some new sessions uh, for them, our Tradypreneur program. The the financial jam session that we did recently went off, Coxie. That was like, it was like a rave. Mm. There was flashing lights and people pumping their hands and Bottles of water getting thrown around, people sweating. You've never been to a rave, have you? No. I've never, <laughs> I've never taken eckies either. Come on. Can we say that on a podcast these days? Yeah, it's 2024. You can say whatever you like. <laughs> Joe, if Joe Rogan can talk about it, we can talk about it. We can talk about whatever we like. And we're actually <laughs> talking about money today, so let's not. <laughs> so um, it wasn't quite like that, but there were lots of light bulbs going on for people. And... Blows my mind, Coxie. So I've spent half my life, unfortunately, in finance and business uh, and business being all about money and finance. And most of the concepts that are going to help you achieve what you want to as a tradie business owner are very, very simple. It's like, it's like building a house or doing plumbing or anything. At the heart of it, it's really simple stuff. When you put it all together, it looks amazing and complicated and uh, you know, lay people or average punters to just look at building projects and all that sort of stuff and just go, holy wow, because they don't understand the simple things that go together to make the complex whole. Yes. And I find finance is exactly the same. Simple principles. Like all of our clients can do basic math. Mm. They can add up three numbers or they can multiply this number by 10% and, and, you know, figure out what the increase is. That's all most of the finances that you need to know to be able to 
add a shitload of money to your bottom line and your bank balance and stick it in your family's pocket every month. I think accountants have a lot to answer for here. They've made it really complicated. And so mm. we feel like we don't understand and we tend to run away rather than saying, actually, I don't understand this. Can you explain it to me in a way I'll understand? And they use, uh, I, I did a, a ep- episode recently on Trady Wife Life with an accountant, Rakesh. Rakesh is actually going to come and start on the show at one point here as well. Lovely gentleman. Mm. We had a fantastic chat and he calls it accountantese. <laughs> Some of the biggest problem here is that accountants talk in accountantese and the general punter does not understand accountantese. I don't even like accountantese. I can talk it. I can go toe to toe in those conversations and I don't like it. It makes mm. me feel overwhelmed and uncomfortable. And so then we tend to, this is just human nature. We tend to shut down rather than strive to understand more because we immediately think, well, I'm dumb because I don't understand. There's a lot of fear and shame around putting up your hand and saying, I don't really understand what you're saying. Could you try explaining another way? Mm. The problem with that though, isn't so much what I don't understand. It's then what I'm not able to execute to create that change. I feel like we talk about change all the time, but to create the outcome that I'm looking for, which in most cases is more profit. I want Mm -hmm. to be able to take more money from the work that I am doing, generally very hard work, long hours, pushing for a solution for my family. I want more profit out of that so that I can have some choice. And that choice might be to take some downtime. It might be to come off the tools. It might be not working weekends. It might be to take a holiday. It might be to employ someone else to help me so I'm not stuck doing it all myself. But I want to strangle as much profit out of every job that I do as possible But I don't know how because I haven't been able to put up my hand and say, I don't really know what's going wrong. I don't understand or I don't know how. And, you know, as you're talking, Coxie, and this is one of the fantastic things about uh, being able to sit here and shut up for a change is I get to listen to you. And I listen to you talk about profit. And even the word profit, Hmm. I think, has this air of, of mystique about it amongst tradie business owners. Uh. And, and it almost seems like a bit of an abstract principle. What they want is cash. Yeah. They, they need to be able to pay their bills. They need to be able to pay wages. They've got to be able to pay themselves, hopefully, pay their mortgage. And profit, you can't pay for things in profit. You can't go to the service station and fill your car up with profit. A great point. You fill your car up with cash. And the problem, I believe, after spending half of what is not a short life uh, in, in finance is... Profit comes before cash. Mm. You can't have cash without profit. Well, not for very long anyway. It eventually runs out. Yes. And so if you want more cash, you actually need to go and focus on profit. It's it's like if you want more potatoes, you got to, oh, no, that's not going to work. Um, <laughs> but we focus on the wrong thing. We're focusing on the output rather than the thing that's going to create the output. Mm. Uh, so here's the thing to create more profit. You don't actually have to be that smart. You don't have to work very hard and you don't have to make much change in your business. Uh, Coxie and I teach something to our tradiepreneur members that proves, I guess, in a lot of ways that with just a little tiny 10% improvement in a few areas in your business, you can increase your profit by 60%. Mm. In most cases. So that means if you're currently making a hundred K profit in your trade business, you could be making $160,000 profit just by improving a few simple, simple things in your business that most of you just overlook on a day-to-day basis by just 10%. That's it. You don't have to double your, your number of inquiries. You don't have to increase your charge out rate by half again. You don't have to do any big stuff. It's just little stuff, small changes, and they multiply out to this crazy, almost unbelievable. When people first see this, Coxie, they kind of sit there scratching their head going, that can't be right. It's too good to be true. So I'm sitting here listening to you and I thought I'm going to go into our drive and search up this calculator. We have a calculator that we use to show people how easy it is to drive that big change in their business. And I found this really cool document that you and I have clearly made at some point during our six or so years (laughs) in business together called 50 Ways to Pull Your Five Profit Levers. So what we're talking about here today essentially is 
there are five levers in your business that you as the business owner can pull on at any time to create a small or an incremental change. It doesn't really matter what kind of change you get, but that change will impact your net profit. And we have this awesome list of 50 things you can do to pull on those five profit levers. That's how easy this is. Tiny, tiny steps create big change over time. So I thought that what I might actually do is just point out sort of those few areas that we have here. Uh, The number of leads. There are so many. I've got 11 steps here that can increase the number of leads that your business is currently receiving. So we did a podcast last week where we were talking, or a little while back, we were talking about cash flow and how for many people they're in another sweet spot and we believe knowing trends the way we do, the phones are going to start to slow down again in the coming weeks to months. So lots of you will be re- be feeling a reduction in the amount of leads that you're currently receiving. Well, I've got 11 ways here that we could help you increase your leads. Just like that. Most are no cost or very low cost strategies. Mm. Next way, next one up is to increase your conversion rate. So most trade businesses, we, oh, I don't know where we were when you and I were it was our coaching session that we did yesterday and we were talking about conversion rates and how if you don't track it, you don't really know and how frequently Mm. we have conversations with tradies who say, oh, my conversion rates are great. I convert about 80% of the people that make an inquiry. Do you? Great. Can you show us where you've tracked that? No, I can't. Mm -hmm. Could you track it for the next month and let's have another look? And they're nearly always surprised to find it's far less than what they thought it was because they're not tracking the right data. They're doing it all off of gut feel. So if your conversion rate, well, let's start with tracking it to begin with. If you're not tracking your conversion rate, if you're not tracking every inquiry, when the inquiry turns to a lead, when the lead turns to a quote, when the quote turns to a job, you don't have the data to understand which part of your process is or is not working. So you can't pull on that lever. That's where it needs to start. And then I've got another uh, 12 ideas on how to increase your conversion rate. 12 ideas on how to convert, change your conversion rate, increase it. Uh, have you found the list? I could see you were searching as we were No, I, I have not found the list, but I'm intrigued. Okay, because, the next one up. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was just going to say, Coxie, that, um, and I want to really impress upon our listeners here, how small an improvement you need to make in order to tap into a massive cumulative change. Mm. And... So all these things that you've just shared, Nick, in two areas, yeah. two levers as we refer to them, you know, business is a machine. We're all tradies or, you know, we hang around the trade. So we kind of get this whole machine metaphor. Yes. Just a 10% improvement, not an additional 10%, but a 10% improvement. So if you're doing, you know, if your conversion rate is currently 50%, a 10% improvement is only five percent so it's 55 percent not an extra 10 percent taking it to 60 percent that that's a big difference like just a little improvement like that can add 30 40 50 grand to the bank balance of many businesses i think the other thing here is everybody feels really busy and overwhelmed and so they tend to think this is going to be too hard or take too much time or i just don't even have time to think about the idea much less you know, take that extra step, get a document, learn how I could start to impact my business in this way. And when I tell you that these steps are really, really small, they're really, really small. Some of them are almost minuscule. They take you five to 10 minutes to implement. They're not mm. hard for you to work through at all. Um, I've actually just tasked as we're sitting here today, and if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see I got distracted for a moment because I've just tasked our team with creating a download for you. So we're going to add a link into the show notes. And if you want to find 50 ways to pull on your five profit levers, go into the show notes and you can grab your free download. It's really simple. We're trying to make this as easy for you as we possibly can. All right. Next up is the average job size. So here's a concept that you you actually, as a tradie, would be partaking in, I would suggest at least weekly. It's when you go and you pay for your fuel. Would you like this deal? You know, you pick up a bottle of water and suddenly you can get a bottle of water and a chocolate or a bottle of water and a packet of lollies mm-hmm. or a packet of chips. Um, three, for just, three for 10 or yeah, yeah or just $6 for one. A tiny bit better, a yep. little tiny bit more. You can do something similar in your trade business. Believe me, I've seen it. We've helped. I don't believe you, Nick. 
I know you don't, but you have, in your own right, helped many businesses. <laughs> not true. So there, there are lots of ways in which we can very easily begin to increase the average job size. That's just one strategy. Then there's some others, like putting up your prices. You can't do that, Nick. You'll lose all your customers. And let's not go into that because we're going to be here for another hour. I know. Dealing with all of the objections. And, and I'm, I'm going to cut you off, Nick, because you're going to give away all that stuff for free. Stop it. Oh, okay. This right. is what we teach our tradiepreneurs. They pay us for this information. Well, I, I really want have all of our listeners to be able to create a change <laughs> the money back in their business. Oh, it just, honestly, Nick, it does my head in that people don't do more about this stuff. And and look, I know you're sitting there listening to this podcast, uh, wherever you are, and, you know, sounds like Waz is having a bit of a whinge and a rant. And I kind of am. Like, how long have you been listening to this podcast? How many episodes have you listened to? How many times have you heard Coxie and I talk about this stuff? How many times have we offered for you to go and grab a download or do a free webinar with us or whatever it might be? And here we are still talking about it, still trying to basically convince you to do something different. And Nick, you've just been through some really simple strategies, as I said at the top of this show. The the parts are simple. The bits that go into making a profitable business are simple, not complicated, but you actually have to put them all together. You can't just have three sticks of timber and a bag of nails and a you know bag of rapid set and call it a house. You got to have enough of the right simple parts, put them all together in the right order, and you get something freaking amazing. That's what a business is like. Mm-hmm. So we've got a bunch of simple bits and pieces that you can put together, and this is one of them. And honestly, if you're finding it a bit tough at the moment, or you have some concern about what might be down the road in the Australian economy and with interest rates and, you know, marketplace, are you going to have work coming in or not? You can start doing things right now to put yourself in a better position in 30 days, 60 days time. Absolutely. I'll I'll guarantee it. I'll do a hundred burpees if it doesn't work. (laughs) We have a strategy that can help find five grand in 30 days Mm. for business. Just like that. It requires you to work with us. It requires you to spend some time with us. I'll make no bones about that. And if you're stuck, you don't know how, the free download isn't enough for you to figure out how to do this, then reach out. So um, Nick's kindly getting our team to turn our 50 lever pulling strategies into a a free download for you. If you're listening to this and and you've responded positively to my little poke, uh, go grab it download it. You might be doing a whole bunch of them. You might be tempted to say, oh, we're already doing all that. And I would challenge you as to how well are you doing them? How consistently are you doing them? Because if you are, you would be getting results. Um, So go grab the download, put them in place. Uh, If you want to find out more about all of this stuff that we do with our tradiepreneurs who are killing it, by the way, we've got some clients doing amazing stuff. Um, Go and hit the website. We've got some free trainings on there. You can get a bit more of Nick and Woz. Um, and we're going to be running more free trainings, live free trainings, uh, throughout the year, just to give you more opportunities to come and learn some stuff and to come and join our community, come and be one of our kick-ass tradiepreneurs, um, cost bugger all compared to what you're going to get out of it. Uh, but it requires you to take some action and do something different. So choice is yours. Thanks for listening. Hey, Ruth.